Hello, welcome to Forest Ecology and Silvics. What this course will be focusing on are the uh, these following items. We're going to look at various uh, growth patterns. We're going to be looking at the auto ecology of tree uh, auto ecology or in other words the silvics of trees and you will be required to learn around 40 trees of about 35 characteristics per tree and their Latin names and you'll be also looking at elements like ec uh, ecological land classification or we will probably be doing more detailed studies as as you'll be learning how to do a permanent growth plot uh, which is a standard across the country and the world So the first thing we're going to be looking at in, in this course is we're going to be looking at plant interaction and so we're going to be looking at how what are the uh, limitations of growth and between trees as a group of trees so that that'll be the first little challenge we will have so for, first we have to back up a bit in regards to what is uh, stand dynamics? I'd like to talk about that. Stand dynamics is something which is forest stand dynamics, excuse me, is something we have a hard time imagining as humans. You know, we uh, for a tree, a short lived tree is 60 years. For in human lives, well, we'd have a different feeling about if that is short lived or not. But the truth of the matter is that we don't realize or don't consider the fact that there's a lot of interactions occurring in that forest which over time can influence the structure. Change is happening all the time. That is a guarantee. So first thing we want to do is look at what is the definition of a stand. And a stand is a, what a stand, a forest stand, is a spatial continuous group of trees and associated vegetation having similar structures and growing under similar soil and climate conditions. So for example, in, if, you're, if it was a forest stand in the, up north in the boreal forest on a sandy site, we may see a mixture of jack pine and poplar with an understory of bunchberry and some ferns and that would be a stand okay and then within that stand we may see that there actually is different stand structures so a young jack pine stand let's say young being 40 years old would have quite a different stand structure compared to a jack pine stand of 120 years and so those things all influence how trees respond to growth. Oh, excuse me. The first thing we want to look at then therefore is the whole idea of what how does a forest grow? And and in the past what has happened is we uh, we had the perception a lot of mis incorrect perceptions one of them is the idea of, of this super organism. In other words, the idea that trees, forest stands, excuse me, are much like human bodies. Take out the liver and then the person dies. That's pretty well a guarantee. But take out a particular forest uh, tree, will the whole forest collapse? Not so. It's a different approach. And the other, same, the same time, is the idea that everything wants to achieve old growth, and then once it gets there, it stays there forever. That's another incorrect idea. Or this whole idea of balance of nature, which is a kind of a vague term at the best of times. Does a force always strive to have a balance of nature? And that has not been the case. What we have found over time has been that the idea, those ideas I just presented, is the idea of mutualism, that things work together. But the truth of the matter, the forest basically is a very competitive place for the vegetation that grows there. Whatever can take an advantage of the growing situation will. 
And, and how do we know that that's true, that mutualism is not the way but com competition is? Well, the, they've looked at different things. They've looked at logged areas and discovered, hey, after it's logged, a white pine stand may well turn out to be uh, come up as a poplar stand with a bit of spruce. Totally different. And we're not surprised about that now because we understand how trees interact and the and their competitive uh, edge they may have at different times of their life. The other one is 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 that as a forests change because of uh, the unfortunate situation of global warming, we're seeing species migrating more north. And MNR is actually doing uh, careful analysis of seeing what compositional changes are occurring in our forest because of species migration. Why are they migrating? Because the more southern species can compete better in, these, uh, in a more warmer climate. Therefore, as the temperatures rise slightly, some of the more northern trees cannot compete and therefore uh, the more aggressively competing southern species can take a foothold. For example, black walnut could be found way north uh, in Timmins someday. The other one is uh, recently introduced species. Buckthorn is an example. That's a tree that wasn't ever here until about a hundred years ago and suddenly trees that have been here for 10,000 years can't compete against it. So it is a competition is all about is how it works. It's not an idea of uh, some to be uh, that just because you've been around for 10,000 years here in the one spot growing that it has a, an edge over an introduced species. No, it's all about competition. Disturbances and age distribution are also influenced by uh, once there's a disturbance, uh, it could be a, a downburst, a tornado, windstorm, uh, ice storm. The species that come back are the ones who can take advantage of the best of that disturbance and compete out compete other trees. So it's all about competition. So in here on this particular uh, uh, picture uh, we have trees competing at the uh, in the understory. We have trees. Uh, these trees here are competing as they grow upwards with these ones here and in actual these trees are competing with each other. So it's a very busy place of forest indeed. And here's another example, extreme examples. Uh, uh, what we have here, we have a wet location and you can see we have the spruce uh, coming in uh, into the very wet areas while the po uh, poplars and such are staying back a bit. They're not able to compete in those kind of sites. And they do try and trees, little trees grow and they die and they get outcompeted. So it's not a question of the tree can see, hey, there's some water, I'm not going near there. It's just a question of how far can it go before it gets outcompeted by another species. Another example on a very dry site, again both of these are up in the uh, areas where you guys are doing your road layout. This is a rocky, rocky site and here you see a, a little uh, pine tree growing in a crack, very dry site and it can outcompete uh, other uh, species which are trying also to establish here. And again, it's all a question of being able to be, uh, is the, the regen strategy. What strategies do trees have so they can uh, grow in different physical environments? Very xeric uh, environment, very hydric environment here. This is one, uh, not such an extreme example of a niche. And here, uh, what you're seeing in this case, what we're going to look at is how a yellow birch here, this yellow birch grows on top of a stump. The stump was here and the seed landed and then the roots grew down down the uh, the, ed the sides of the uh, stump and because it was a nice moist place it was excellent it could uh, 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 yellow birch is great for doing this. They have that capability of using very rich moist soils and inside a forest and the stump rotted right away and it looks like there's a tree standing in the forest on stilts. But the whole idea is this 
yellow birch took advantage of these stumps to grow or if, if a log is laying in the forest for example like here you probably would see also yellow birch seedlings growing there here again another important factor that you talked about before is um, this is soils soils can greatly influence where trees grow and when we look at this example here and you've seen this at fall camp and the whole idea here is if you look at the um, up here we have different types of very much clay types of soils here we have more sandy soils and more silty soils and based on the uh, makeup of the soils different types of trees will grow for example up in the clay soils more predominant trees you will find are black spruce do trees do black spruce love growing on clay no but they can outcompete other trees as jack pines can outcompete other trees on these drier sandier coarser soils and then and then the hardwoods are found in more of these true loams in the middle equal mixes of clay silt and sand the other so here's an example of um, and this example that I found um, again it's just to show you how different forest communities and the, the tree species are illustrated here and as you change the the topography the soil type that what you will find is different types of forest communities or groups of trees growing together highly influenced by this and this is really neat to see and this is what we hope you observe on your as you do your road layout and forest cover type analysis and this here we are showing again the soil the last one was the soil types and here we're doing is uh, showing you the soil mo uh, the whole uh, soil moisture okay uh, conditions and this can greatly influence the type of trees that can grow there here you have an example we we have three species here we have lodgepole pine we have Sitka spruce and we have Douglas fir and on this diagram what they've done is showing you that the on the x-axis xeric or very dry uh, locations are here very mesic or medium type of moisture and very hydric or wet remember the hydric or wet doesn't mean that you can find uh, uh, lilies and uh, water lilies and uh, cattails I'm saying just moist mucky soils where like for example black ash could grow or black spruce so here they have it on the y-axis they're showing you the height at age 10 in meters okay so what is the height at age 10 and this is just relative that's all that matters is so when you compare the three so when you look at the three here uh, you can see that the lodgepole pine which is this line here it can be found on dry sites to hydric sites okay uh, when you look at the Douglas fir the Douglas fir can be found more or less on moist type of sites here and when you look at the Sitka spruce it is found more on the wet sites and what happens here is that you can see that we have if this if a Sitka spruce a seed lands in a drier site it is less opportunity of growing as compared to a lodgepole or even better a Douglas fir so depending on the moisture content of soil you'll see different species uh, grow and then again refer, will influence the forest stand composition the percentage of each species found gradient of uh, climate this is just to uh, give you an idea and I think we all are well aware that the more north you go the more the different types of forests you're going to find and uh, in this little diagram here you can see that the more north you go you have this band of forest across to Canada called the Boreal Forest is certainly there and then when you look at here you can see in, in British Columbia with the mountains high variability because of elevation and altitude and uh, aspect different uh, 
types, uh, different and sides of the of the actual mountain tops can greatly influence the forest. Last thing I want to do is just quickly talk about is uh, a niche, just giving you an example of um, of three species competing, and you can see here what we got in this example is that we have, if you look uh, here, we have you look at on this axis here we have sites which are very dry excuse me very wet mesic and xeric okay so that's in this direction while if you look at the, this axis here we have low elevation this is for the again and this is for the British Columbia example low elevation to high elevation and then on the last axis we have competition so let me walk you through this lodgepole pine Okay, lodgepole pine is found on from dry to wet sites, as we talked about. Okay, Douglas fir is can be found on medium types of moist sites, and red alder can be found on pretty well moist, very moist sites. So, what does that mean? This is showing that if you have Douglas fir and lodgepole pine growing on medium sites, Douglas fir will outcompete lodgepole pine, but uh, and that seems to work uh, out competed uh, from a low elevation to about medium elevation but on high elevations on moist sites lodgepole pine wins in other words is found more frequently if you look down here at red alder red alder is found on at the lower elevations okay on on moist sites and the result is if that if those two conditions occur, red alder will outcompete Douglas fir and lodgepole pine in those situations, always influencing the type of forest composition.